thanks for for speaking to to me this evening um because i just love your story about brian and nero and i'd love you to share it with other owners out there um so if you could just tell us well do you, what do you want to do do you want to start with one because you've got the two dogs who are both plant-based <laughs> when they let tell us a bit about them first of all okay so yeah we have um two dogs that live with us we have brian who is a border terrier um he's going to be 12 this year uh my parents actually bred him back before i was firmly on team adopt don't shop um but i've had him since day one I was there when he was born oh, um wow. and he's been my little buddy ever since uh and then about six years ago we adopted Nero who mm. is our Greek Labrador cross we're not entirely sure what general mm. consensus is maybe German shorthead pointer or spaniel um but he he kind of looks like a chocolate Labrador with a little white bib um and he is between probably nine and 11 they sort of guess um when you rehome a lot of these street dogs based on their teeth and their size and that was the uh, that was the age I think when we adopted him they thought he was five so yes anywhere Love around that. that ballpark. Lovely and and so so your two boys so when did you decide or your decision on turning them plant-based when did that come about? So full disclosure, my husband and I are ethical vegans and have been for about six years now, but the dogs have always eaten meat, very, very high meat content diets. Mm. And then a couple of years ago, I came across an article that talked about the environmental impact of Mm. um, dog foods on the uh, climate in terms of emissions and land use and that kind of thing so obviously you know in our own personal lifestyles my husband and I steer clear of animal products for ethical reasons but for the dogs um, it was actually the environmental side of things that really made me sit back and take notice Um, at that time because I was so very you know insistent that dogs absolutely had to eat meat for health and for proper nutrition I was not at all comfortable switching them to plant-based food it was not an option I wouldn't hear it I just didn't want to know so I looked at insect based dog foods um we tried that for a little while um but as I know I've discussed with you Brian his entire life suffered with the most appalling chronic gastro issues Uh, He'd have really frequent bouts of vomiting, diarrhea, stomach cramps, um, abdominal pain, bloating, um, that kind of thing. You know, he'd frequently be passing blood um, Mm -hmm. in his stool. He would just be very, very unhappy. He'd, He'd wake us up being physically sick probably three or four times a week. Um, and was he yeah. ever treated for, for it? Was he he was back and forth <clears throat> to the vet constantly, even as a really young puppy. First of all, we thought um, you, you know it was some kind of um, sort of uh, you know in, immune thing, perhaps. And then it was maybe that it was um, pancreatitis. Uh, I think at one stage he was put on medication to try and speed up um, his sort of gut motility, the speed at which the food was actually going through his system because the vet started to wonder, you know, is it sort of sitting inside him for too long? And that was what was making him be sick in the night. He um, was treated twice for Campylobacter infection, Uh which I'm fairly sure Uh he picked up during (laughs) our um, raw food phase yeah, um, yeah, when, when I was when I was um doing sort of the yeah, the bath biologically yeah. appropriate raw food diet for both dogs yeah. um he got very very sick twice and fecal testing showed um quite heavy campylobacter load uh, mm-hmm. so he was on antibiotics and treatment for that mm-hmm. um we never really 100% got to the bottom of what was causing his issues they, they were constant it was almost every other day some 
some oh symptom of these would be Easy. happening yeah. and it was miserable it was just yeah. awful and yeah. he'd go days without eating um he was so often in pain you could tell he sitting hunched up and he'd, he'd look so well so anyway he, we put him on this insect-based food it was one of the big commercial brands that's available at the moment um and very quickly we realized that that was making him very very sick as well mm-hmm. i don't know if it was um the novel protein mm-hmm. that he just it didn't suit him um and at that point i thought okay you know I, i'm gonna have to <laughs> maybe actually take off my dogs need meat hat and put on my can they eat other things hat and apply myself to actually researching whether or not a plant-based diet might be a better choice environmentally um, Mm -hmm. than the diet they were on which would tended to be you know as a minimum I would look for foods with 80% meat content um, Uh and the rest of it would be you know vegetables and perhaps lentils very expensive (laughs) Um, took up a lot of space in the freezer and to be quite honest Brian especially did not really enjoy the food near our rescue I will freely admit he'll eat anything absolutely anything he ate a cigarette butt off the floor the other day while we were out walking um he's just he's just a scavenger he really is I think that's the that's the Labrador um, the Labrador the street dog in him yes, absolutely um but Brian really wasn't enjoying it so I had to go back to the drawing board and work out if there was another option and that was when I found just be kind um your website and started to read through um all the information on there and sort of came to the conclusion that actually maybe it was worth having a go what was there to lose wonderful okay you're gonna make me cry (laughs) your your story is really really you're exactly the owner that that I reached out for when when I set up my site you you epitomize everything you've got a, a problem a severe problem with with Brian um with he obviously has a severe meat intolerance because so so which 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 is the most common allergen that we get in dogs mm. and so the more the more meat he was being given the worse his condition was getting yeah. and I know so, no one had ever no vet had ever said to no, me no. that actually you know meat and dairy are really really common Mm. allergens I no one had ever said that to me I knew that chicken could Mm. be but I was always told that was because the grains that chicken that that the chickens are fed and so you you know for years what we were trying Mm. to do was find novel meat proteins Mm. that that would you know surely fix Mm. his issues um we tried a Noah's Ark of animals. I mean, honestly, <sighs> goat, rabbit, venison, horse. Um, yeah. I think we tried ostrich. I think the next on the list that someone had suggested was crocodile. And, uh, and you don't um, you don't even want to think how these animals are killed. You don't even want to think about it. How, how what an abattoir of a rabbit abattoir, or a, which they come from China, or what a, a yeah. crocodile abattoir looks like. I mean, crocodiles are the most incredibly intelligent animals, and ostriches. Yeah. And you don't even want you. I think when you're a desperate owner in that situation, you are completely detached from anything, and all you want is to try and make make your dog better. But mm. so, so which of the the plant based did you try first? Which was the the first Ooh, one then. good question I think to begin with I may have tried um the Greta oh, um okay. which yes. is the the sort of rice Just, and potato yes. and, and I think yeah. it's got beetroot in it as well that's right the red kind of yes. yeah yeah um and that that went down really well and I think I also then went on to try um the green crunch, green crunch lovely. um which again mm-hmm. went down really well and then I think it was solo vegetal which is, I think yeah. is the Italian mm-hmm. one that's right um yeah. and they've loved them all to be honest <sighs> we've not come across one of the plant-based foods mm-hmm. that they haven't mm-hmm. liked and at the same time um you helped me formulate um a home cooked mm, sort of wet food for them that I could make yeah. at home and add a, a balanced supplement to to kind of complement mm-hmm. the the dry biscuits that they were getting because 
you know everyone likes variety don't they <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. so uh, we did and, that and, as well and again that 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 went down a treat they love it oh brilliant and, and what was it quite instant with his with his issues with his pain and the cramping or did it take a while for his little well, system to get used to it this was this was the thing that amazed me at no point did I think that the plant-based food would help him it, it wasn't even a, 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 a blip on the radar. I was, by this point, resigned to the fact that Brian had a chronic stomach issue. And that was that. But like, this was his life, you know, multiple yeah. times a week, getting up in the night, you know, let, letting him out and then having him spend the rest of the night shaking next to me in bed because he was in so much pain. That was just how he was. So I didn't even consider mm. that mm. a plant based diet might help. I would say that within maybe two to three weeks, his issues were, they're not completely gone. Or, you know, maybe once every three or four months, he might have wow. one of his episodes for a couple of hours. But other than that, it, it, has, it has changed his life. And I think, yeah. you know, I, I was making his food one day and I thought, when, when was the last time he was sick when was and, and I said to my I said to my husband I said do you remember the last time Brian was ill and he sort of thought no I don't actually and it was at that point that I realized that actually the food might be genuinely making a difference I mean you know is he fully cured no is he 95 percent better yes He's completely wow. off the medications. He hasn't seen a vet in well over a year for this for this issue. Mm -hmm. Whereas before, we may have as well have had a loyalty card for our local vet. We were down there so often. Um, <laughs> his, he's, he's completely, many of <laughs> he's completely <laughs> excluded on insurance for anything to do with his stomach. Um, so you know, every time we went to the vet, it was it was coming out of our own pockets, our own savings, and saved us a lot of money. I tell you, oh. not that we'd ever begrudge spending that money on vet mm. bills, of course, but he just hasn't needed to see a vet for yeah. such a long time. He enjoys his food now time was my husband would actually get on his hands and knees and pretend to eat Brian's dinner just to encourage him to actually eat just something anything because he'd go days without eating a thing now he'll sit you know at the threshold of the kitchen and watch while I prepare his food for him it's and while so... I put it in front of him and I think you know there's probably people out there that would say oh yeah, it's probably because he's really hungry because he misses meat no I would stake anything on the fact that he knows that what he's eating exactly. that he doesn't make him sick doesn't cause yeah. him pain anymore yeah. and that for me I think has been one of the most rewarding things you know setting aside the fact that I feel better in terms of the environmental impact of the food I'm using mm -hmm. the um you know ethical oh. questions yeah. regarding you know commercial mm -hmm. pet foods and things the fact that making that change has quite accidentally helped him so 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 much it, mm -hmm. honestly it's difficult to put into words sometimes how nice it is not sort of you know thinking going to bed and thinking oh is this is this going to be the night that he has one of his major episodes that you know he comes in from the garden with blood running down his hind legs it really it really was just mm -hmm. appalling and yeah. um, it's just not anymore because he's got no more no more issues oh gosh I mean this is just music to my ears Rachel <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. because, because uh, I mean yes you, you you've done it for the right reasons you've done it the the choices you started with for, for ethical reasons without realizing that the health benefits mm. so so you actually started on the right track but but now that you've got him on plant-based in his older years, you will extend his lifespan considerably compared to what he would have had, both of them, mm. compared to what they, they both would have had, especially if you can even incorporate even more of the home cooking mm. with choosing natural whole food ingredients that that you know suit him yeah um, so well done gosh what a fascinating story it's yeah. it's just so so heartwarming because what your your words will 
definitely be heard by so many owners out there mm. who are experiencing exactly the same thing and have exactly the same concerns as you have even though you're vegan you still feel that meat and, and raw meat in particular is the best for dogs because yeah. it's what's ingrained in everybody yeah. but yeah. it's just it's it's these these huge corporate companies that Obviously, the food is all meat based, but actually, raw feeding's also become an enormous business, a multi million pound business. So, because because it's so cheap to buy buy this meat, um, meat should be a luxury like it was in the fifties, but it's not anymore. It's so heavily subsidised by governments, and so meat is actually cheap. And then, obviously, the byproduct of the meat industry is even cheaper. So these yeah. companies making a fortune, but at the end of the day, it's not the best thing for dogs mm -hmm. <laughs> it really yeah. isn't. I mean shortly so, after yeah. I adopted Nero I actually um I wrote a, a, a bath feeding guide for the charity that I got him from you know so oh, wow. adamant was I that Adam. this this yes. was the the best way to yeah. to feed dogs and actually mm -hmm. you know I, I had Nero on a, a bath diet spent mm. a very very long time you'll know from the emails I send you frequently I'm always researching mm. researching researching you know what does this mean have you seen this and, you know, yes. and um I, you know the lady who runs the shelter over in Greece actually messaged me on Facebook one day and said um Neri's looking a bit skinny is he is he eating enough and I said well you know I, I feed him I feed him loads but actually no the, the weight isn't isn't staying on him and you know what, when we stopped <laughs> raw feeding him and, and sort of um, had him on commercial foods, the weight started to, to creep back on. And actually now he's a really healthy weight. You know, he's got a beautiful waist. If you take him to the vet and you put him on the scales, he's, he's exactly sort of where he should be, you know, roughly for his breed. Obviously, he's a crossbreed. He, he weighs 18 yeah. kilos, which they seem to think is absolutely spot on. And I had to change my mindset. Mm -hmm. I, I think I had to... Yeah be open-minded to setting aside those preconceived ideas that I had yes. of yeah. you know what dogs yeah. can eat and what they can thrive on and I think you know it's this very pervasive um thought process that says dogs need meat well, actually they need the nutrients in meat <laughs> um, and if they can be provided yeah. by other means that's that's what we're trying to do um and i'm very very confident based on all the information you know provided by just be kind and other sites that i've seen that the foods that i am feeding in the home cooking that i am doing with your guidance and your support provide all those necessary nutrients and vitamins and minerals and all the things the dogs need um their coats are shiny their teeth are beautiful their breath's lovely you know the, the, the yeah. poos are it sounds odd really nice they, they don't <laughs> smell either do they they don't smell anymore those um <laughs> and yeah it has been something of an awakening I will freely admit that you know if you'd have spoken to me three years ago I'd have been the loudest critic of feeding dogs plant-based diets I really would have been even as a vegan of several years at that point but yeah. you're converted <laughs> <laughs> wonderful oh and and i mean that yes as i say music to my ears but equally everything i've learned and everything i've done i've used my own dog as mm. as my little guinea pig so i would never pass on information that i'm not doing to my own dog to owners which um which is because i'm i was in your your shoes as well mm -hmm. i was never a raw feeder but as a vet, I was always a meat-based feeder and, and mm. it's just ingrained in us is this is what you feed. And this is as a vet, you, you give these when dogs are ill, but, but it's just going into to researching and, and going into to all the research that's been done in Germany. That's actually been my complete inspiration, which is why I import. So, so you are able to get the Greta and the Green Crunch again, because thankfully I've started importing them. Yeah, thank you for that. So thank thank you. <laughs> that's true. We've got the solar vegetal, the Greta and the Green Crunch, and yeah. fantastic to be doing the home feeding as well. So just well done, Rachel. Your story is just so 
so interesting and just so good for your two boys. As I say, Thank they you. will, they'll live much longer. You'll have them around for much longer, which is at the end of the day what we all want. That's, what, that's <laughs> everything we want, isn't it? If only that's dogs could live as long as we did, unfortunately they that's don't. Funny. But sort of, you know, if I can make mm. sure that the years they have left are happy and comfortable and diets are part of that, then why would anyone not want that? definitely but uh, thank you for all your help and support and for all the information you provide on your website because without that source of of knowledge and information Mm -hmm. and honesty you know you're you're very frank about why things need to be done properly and what can happen if if they're not I don't think I ever would have made that change and I think you know two years would have gone by of Brian having the same issues and the same pain Mm -hmm. and the same discomfort almost on a daily basis so thank you for for doing what you're doing because I know that at times, you know, based on conversations I have with people, it's not the easiest message to get across. No, no, it's not. <laughs> but doing it the way you're doing it, just telling us your story mm. and being honest about it is the only way forward because it, it'll just get more and more people to realize and, and then reduce this impact that dog food is having on the environment, which was your original aim. Yes. Um, yes. And, and so the more people that feed um, plant-based, the less of an impact because 25% of meat is actually used in pet food. So, mm-hmm. so that's an enormous amount. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. One in every four cows is killed for our pets, <laughs> which is which is yeah. a horrendous statistic. And the number uh, of dogs in the UK is just going up all the time. I think, you know, there's the first 12 million dogs in the UK now, and a couple of years ago, there were only 10 million. So you're quite right. Something's yeah. got to give at some yeah. point. We know what's going on yeah. um, out there in terms of the mm. environment you know Mm -hmm. the impact that we're having with our agricultural practices and other sort of anthropomorphic um impacts and i think pets and pet food you know it's in the spotlight at the moment i've seen quite a few articles Mm -hmm. recently about it and about the impact that pet foods have meat-based pet foods have on the environment and i think you know it's a conversation worth having even if it's uh, not the easiest or most welcome one at times so let's keep this conversation going so you're just brilliant to, to do this thank you so much and-